Welcome to The Hair Loss Show, where Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Hair Loss Show. Uh, Vikram, good to have you here. Nice to see you. So there. today we're going to talk about uh, a bit more about regenerative therapies. Uh, because the hot topic at the moment is the difference between PRP and PRF. So just to reacquaint you with what we're talking about, PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. So this is a blood draw put through a centrifuge um, and you take off the plasma with concentrated platelets, which are clotting factors. Now, ordinarily, they're blood clotting factors, but what they contain within the platelets, mostly, is growth factors. Mm some inhibitory factors, unfortunately, yes. but also growth factors. And so these are injected um, into the scalp in the, the hope that the, um, the growth factors will stimulate the surrounding hairs to make them stronger. So uh, that's called PRP. And then there's an, an, another version out that's getting a lot of publicity at the moment called platelet-rich fibrin. And the difference is that this is a high-speed spin and up with just clear fluid. This is a slow-speed uh, spin. And so basically, you, know, you don't separate all the red cells um, uh, out from uh, the plasma, mm -hmm. right? And so the, the reasoning behind that is that they believe that the fibrin um, uh, acts as a kind of a scaffold so that, you, so that the platelets will adhere to the scaffold and last longer in the scalp. So with PRP, the idea is that it only lasts uh, in minutes to hours after you do, uh, after you do the injection. Um, uh, they, they just fade away very, very quickly. Uh, but with PRF, they stick around longer because the fibrin acts as a scaffold and allows them to exert their biological effect longer. So that's a potential advantage. The potential disadvantage is because of the slow spin, there's less platelet concentration. Yes. And so well, what PRP has kind of demonstrated is that you have to have significant platelet concentrations to get um, any effect. And uh, that's one of the problems uh, that we have at the moment is that there is no classic protocol for what people do with PRP. So everyone's through, doing it different. Everyone's doing it their own way. You have no idea whether you're getting a one, a normal concentration, a double concentration, a triple concentration, a quadruple concentration. I mean, um, people think that you need to be at a million, uh, you know, uh, platelets concentration, which is five times normal before it, it's going to be biologically effective. So um, it, it's... People love the idea of being natural. They love the idea mm -hmm. of it not having, being involved in medication. Uh, and doing this, uh, but again, there's, you know, one of the controversies about PRP or PRF is whether the injecting is doing the work rather than what you're injecting, yes. because when you put the needle in the scalp, you injure the scalp, so the natural repair mechanisms mobilise growth factors and, and start to stimulate. And we see this actually after transplants. We see with uh, some of our patients where they get wiry, coarse hair for the first 18 months after the, uh, yes. uh, the operation which is a function of the overstimulation of the growth factors and the hairs become very, very coarse, but then they settle down and become, uh, become normal. So there is there's an effect even from the operation. So, I mean, I think that's the, you know, one of the issues because a lot of places will tout that they've got PRP and everyone is saying that they've got the best PRP. But there's, uh, I mean, the issue is that there's no, like you said, there's no unified protocol. But fundamentally, the other thing that, escapes everyone's explanation is that everyone is an individual. So your platelet count is different to mine, is different, you know, to spikes to everyone's. And whoever, you know, it depends on the concentration in that individual, how effective that will be. And the quality of the hair that you're trying to oh, yes. resuscitate. Because, because I think one of the big mistakes that's being made with these technologies is that they're, um, they're putting them into people that are, that are very thin. Yeah. And if you've got very thin hairs, nothing's going to work. No. And so, uh, you know, if you're going to do PRP and, and people are going to tell you, oh, we do PRF or, as well as PRP and you're going to decide, you need to be in the early stages of the thing for any chance of this to work. Yes. Um, but again, you know, you need a credible clinic because there's just too many Me Too clinics, you know, saying, oh, we do, we do this, we do that. Uh, you need a credible clinic that's got some good results there for you. And just be careful with photography, right? Photography can be very deceptive. Mm -hmm. You've got to look at the before and after photos and you've got to look at the lighting of the photos, whether the combing, the hairs are combed in the same direction. We see a lot of this. I mean, I, I, I'll be honest, I don't have any photographs of uh, before and afters for PRP, mm -hmm. primarily because I don't have any patients that I think that are just purely on PRP treatment. Mm -hmm. 
they're usually on, that's PRP is one of the treatment options that they're on. Okay. So if you look at what are the before and after is of, of these patients in particular, it's a combination of all the therapies and you can't go, right, well, this is, I can't quantify the effect of, of what and, the and, and is and it's, and it's confusing for the doctors as well because, in fact, you know, recently there, were, there was a literature search, if you like, an analysis of 175 papers published in scientific medical journals about PRP and its effect on hair. But only 17 of them actually met the criteria for a properly controlled trial. Mm. Only 17, so that's 10% of what's in the medical literature, even qualifies as a decent study of it. So, you know, again, it's, you know, I have no objection to people doing it. Um, as long as it's an appropriate thing to do. But I think that you have to go to somewhere which just isn't the me too, you know, we just at, you know, yeah, we do this. Uh, and, you know, you need to understand that it has to be done in a very specific way to have any chance of working. So let me put you on the spot. Which do you think is better? Well, I think that in, uh, in some of our overseas colleagues mix PRP with, a, with an extracellular matrix okay, so product yeah. um, to get that scaffolding and get the prolonged effect because they were disappointed with yes. the results of just PRP alone. So I, I was just thinking about this today, that, it, that if you mix some PRP with, with some PRF, that might make sense because you, you know, if you've got a lower concentration of platelets, that's a negative. You've got a higher concentration of platelets, that's a positive. So maybe, maybe if you use a bit of PRF to get that uh, scaffolding and use a bit of PRP into the same syringe so that yes. you get more platelets, maybe that would make it more useful. I haven't, I'm not doing PRF, no, um, but I, I, I will do PRP in an appropriate patient. Yes. Good. I think that probably raises a lot more questions because it's, uh, I mean, there's certainly not a lot of data for PRF in here. No, no, no. The, 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 the data is lacking at the moment. It's, um, there aren't a lot of papers out there. There aren't a lot of, not a lot of research uh, evidence yet, um, but the people are advertising it and people are talking about it. Yes. And that's the reason for the topic today. I mean, just because it's new doesn't mean it works and doesn't mean it's better. <laughs> yes. So yeah, make sure you do your research, make sure you have a uh, chat with your, with your physician and have an understanding of what is most appropriate uh, for you. And uh, I'm sure you make a great decision. But thank you again for watching. Please remember to uh, submit your questions and thank you for your support. We'll try and get through as many of the questions as we can. And keep liking and subscribing. Thank you so much for your support. Thanks.